ICICI Direct and Money Control present Path to Financial Freedom. Hello and a very warm welcome everyone. Today we are talking about investing. Now we all know about investing and how it can help meet our goals, protect against that unplanned exigency and help achieve our financial freedom eventually. This session is designed to provide you with the foundational principles of smart investing. Now, I know for some people, investing can seem daunting with its charts and jargons and constant market fluctuations that people talk about. But the truth is, it doesn't have to be complicated. By understanding some key concepts, you can confidently begin to build and grow your financial future. And as part of our Path to Financial Freedom series by ICICI Direct and Money Control, this podcast is with Mr. Pankaj Pandey, who is the head of retail research at ICICI Direct, and he will give his views on how and when should one get started and answer some interesting queries that we all have from time to time when it comes to investing. So welcome, Pankaj. Welcome uh, to this very interesting session that we are hosting for our audiences. The first question is a very simple one. When should one start investing? So India is one of the best performing markets globally. Uh, while there are a lot of our options available for investors, but India, according to me, is experiencing one of the best macros. The corporate balance sheets are the best what we have seen. Even the household debt is quite balanced, and which is why I feel that the overall consumption plus capital expenditure by households and corporate is expected to sustain. Uh, so India is going to experience a lot more durable growth rate going forward and which is uh, clearly getting reflected in the market performance as well. So in terms of markets, I think India is one of the best markets uh, to be into in terms of investing. Now one simple approach uh, for markets could be that uh, to sort of uh, invest over a period of long time uh, because uh, that will help us in terms of, uh, in terms of capturing the compounding effect. Uh, compounding is considered to be the eighth wonder of the world. A uh, simple calculation could be that uh, uh, a nifty return of 14% usually doubles uh, or would double in a five year time frame. Whereas uh, when you look at a fixed income return of say 7%, that will take about 10 years to sort of double. So India is, uh, India's growth story is one of the best ever which we have seen. So I think the, uh, to, uh, India is one of the best markets uh, to get into at this point in time. Right. You know, this is uh, one of the questions that come to everybody's mind uh, when we talk about investing, which is uh, how should I align my life goals with investing? Um, therefore, it leads to the second question, which is what percentage of one's income uh, should be invested um, because a lot of times the youngsters say oh I don't have those many very lofty goals um, sometimes uh, uh, people who are uh, uh, you know in the mid level they say that oh there are so many expenditures how do I align my investments with what is happening in life because there are a lot of people who keep wondering about um, uh, have I saved enough for my retirement etc so uh, what percentage of one's income should be looked for investment and what percentage should be looked to keep liquid in case of any emergency or uh, while uh, keeping an emergency fund, so to say, um, because everything is can be so unpredictable as well. So usually for some liquidity purpose, one can keep uh, two, three, two to three months of their expenses uh, in liquid instruments. And another probably one and a half years or two years of in, uh, expenses uh, in fixed income. Rest everything can be in equities. So age is really not a factor. It is more to do with what individual requirement uh, one has. Because uh, uh, overall, equity is the only asset class which can deliver double digit returns. So which is where a maximum possible allocation towards equity is what uh, the best uh, uh, combination could be for any investor. And again, it is also a function of what kind of risk one can take. Because when you look at a large cap, a large cap can typically correct 10 to 12% every year. And that is what we have seen historically since say 2007. Mid caps usually offer higher return, but they can correct uh, say 15 to 18 odd percent every year. And small cap, although they offer the highest return, the correct extent of correction in small caps uh, could be about 25% in a year. So it all depends on what kind of a risk appetite one carries. 
but overall our sense is that the equity is uh, one of the better classes to be into if uh, we are in a wealth creation mode we were talking about um, uh, types of investments and again there a lot of people have confusion um, how much should be invested in equities what should be uh, the ratio of uh, within equities what should be the ratio of mutual funds some people uh, very strongly believe in uh, diversifying their portfolio by uh, looking at um, uh, assets such as uh, real estate or uh, gold so there is a lot of confusion with that and there's a debate about that and then you know a lot of times it so happens that you see other people and then you start to decide your own uh, a uh, risk appetite where whereas it could be very different from other people so uh, ideally is there a ratio or is there a um, some kind of a math that can help people in where should one be investing and how much so there are typically two modes what one can follow so one is the wealth preservation mode in wealth preservation mode uh, typically the objective is to keep uh, the wealth at intact levels or possibly protect against inflation so there the allocation towards fixed, re- fixed income can be higher but generally when you look at uh, we have a fairly young uh, population uh, which is below 30 years of age uh, so wealth generation mode is the preferred mode for that i think equity is one of the best asset classes to be into now you can invest in equities either directly or indirectly through mutual funds or you could get exposure towards equity through a fund uh, which is uh, etf uh, where investments happen in a in a certain uh, uh, weightages format so again uh, whether it is direct equity or whether it is mutual fund or whether it is etf i think one can look at investing and again you can tap a larger or a broader universe for investing so for example when you are sort of uh, investing in a nifty etf you are looking uh, or you are allocating your money towards the uh, top 50 uh, companies uh, in india so from that perspective overall again uh, individual instruments one can choose depending on what kind of uh, bandwidth that they get because when you are sort of choosing direct equity now in direct equity you need to sort of do a lot more homework and uh, whereas in case of mutual funds you park your money with one of the best fund managers and allow him to sort of uh, take the course or in etf uh, you are largely uh, sort of investing through a uh, through a fund and uh, again uh, there uh, the performance of that particular etf is going to be dependent on the kind of the benchmark fund uh, which uh, it carries so again uh, all of them meet the same perspective it is just that the routes are different right um i know you have already spoken about this but uh, I, um, this is one question that people want and uh, want an answer to a lot of times that within equity and within mutual funds are there some specific sectors that they should be looking at how do they educate themselves uh, about what is happening in the market is there a way to understand uh, when to relook at the portfolio that you're already holding how often should you be doing that so these are some of the questions that come to us when we specifically talk about equities and uh, mfs and uh, within them also how should you be allocating and of course uh, the best way of uh, uh, educating yourself about uh, the markets so uh, i think when you look at uh, in terms of process uh, see equity uh, is again a combination of uh, maths uh, and science and uh, behavioral science as well uh, so it's not a perfect math uh, which works and uh, which is why it is extremely important that uh, the process uh, becomes extremely important now you really do not have any control in terms of the kind of input what we get because uh, we see uh, we live in a dynamic world a lot of things ch- keep on changing on a daily basis similarly the output also keeps on changing so what is uh, our under control is the process and which is where the research brings uh, that kind of a discipline now again in research you have various teams uh, you have uh, something like technical analysis which again is a study of say uh, price and volume whereas on the fundamental side uh, you have uh, a study of uh, say a lot of uh, financial variables plus uh, e- external internal variables and then also you look at the kind of uh, shaping up of the business which can happen in future so uh, so whether you are adopting a combination of technical or also a fundamental again the process part is extremely important because uh, process is something which is what uh, one can control and which is where uh, uh, when we look at so uh, my team covers uh, 200 plus stocks 
and uh, we bring a lot of process, a lot of discipline in terms of how we analyze stocks. And it's not only about stocks, even in mutual funds also, so which is where it becomes extremely important. So if someone is sort of uh, investing individually, I think uh, uh, while you can get the same outcome uh, or same result or same upside in a stock or in a mutual fund, uh, but eventually it is the process which is extremely important. I think in equity market, is, it is all about making less mistakes uh, because uh, when you are taking uh, a lot of uh, intuitive calls, it's all about making less mistakes and, uh, and you can minimize those mistakes uh, by adopting processes. Uh, one of the questions that also a lot of times come from people is, uh, how do I select my relationship manager? Or how do I, um, uh, how do I go about finding a financial uh, investment advisor for myself? Uh, are there some questions that we should be asking or looking at or the profiles we should be looking at before uh, selecting uh, this advisor for ourselves? So it is extremely important uh, 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 when you sort of uh, seek the advice of a wealth manager is that uh, they make you a lot more organized. You become a lot more process oriented uh, because uh, uh, you can get same output by investing yourself or even through mutual fund. But when you uh, uh, avail the services of a relationship manager or a research analyst. So while obviously they'll come up with lot more ideas which you can capture, uh, be it in terms of uh, the kind of mutual funds which you can buy or uh, the equity stocks which you can buy. But they also, along with that, they also bring in a lot of processes. So your thinking or your approach towards your investing uh, becomes a lot more organized. And in that process, you make uh, relatively less mistakes and uh, which is where the wealth creation also happens. Because uh, in case if you are really not taking the advice, it is possible that you make, uh, you commit a larger mistake and which again sort of impacts your overall corpus creation uh, in a longer time frame. So uh, availing the services of RM is extremely important. As a ICC direct research team, we cover about 200 plus stocks across capital, uh, across sectors, uh, so we, there are about 60, 17 odd sectors and across caps, so across large cap, mid cap and small caps. Similarly, in mutual funds, uh, we cover most of the top mutual funds and uh, uh, we meet fund managers, so it's not only the pri uh, price performance uh, is what we look at, we also look at how they are positioning themselves uh, even for the changes in future as well. You, you've had a long career of uh, foreseeing the markets, meeting a lot of clients, etc. What, in your uh, opinion, uh, is uh, um, are some of those myths that need to be busted or some of the most common mistakes that even the best of people make? People expect that equity markets are volatile and which is why this is not the place uh, to be into. While this is true for a shorter time frame, two, three years, uh, but when you sort of elongate the horizon or when you make the horizon more than five years, 10 years or even uh, longer, uh, equity markets are relatively loss, uh, less volatile, uh, largely because structurally, if your economy does well, which is what the case uh, with our economy uh, and uh, largely the equity markets are going to replicate the overall earning growth. So if if as an economy we are going to deliver positive growth which is what uh, the overall setup is like and which is where we feel that equity markets are going to be a lot less volatile. That is one of the myths. Then I think uh, one perspective is that uh, people expect that uh, they need multi-bagger in their portfolio to sort of uh, generate wealth. Uh, I think uh, uh, the overall investing can be kept very simple. Uh, any stock which delivers say 15% CAGR kind of a return or a sustainable return is a good stock from a portfolio perspective. Because uh, if you are getting 14-15% kind of a return, typically the earnings are going to get doubled in the next five years. And even if uh, the valuations are rich, uh, you will still get a positive uh, return, far more higher than the uh, fixed income uh, uh, as, a, as a category. And the other thing is that uh, uh, people think that uh, one should not be really chasing high P stocks uh, and uh, those are to be avoided. I think it all depends on uh, what kind of context uh, you are seeing. Uh, so in a commodity business, uh, the PE multiples for any company will be higher when the earnings are lower. And that is not the time to avoid uh, some of these companies. 
So, so again, uh, you need to understand that uh, uh, which part of the earning cycle are they? Are they early part of the revival of the earning cycle or are, are they at the peak? Definitely, if they are at the peak, uh, high P multiples is something uh, where things can become a lot more challenging from a return perspective. But if it is a down cycle, uh, one should not really get worried with high P multiple. So, and P multiple is obviously not the only parameter which is being looked at uh, from a from an investing perspective. Before I let you go, uh, one closing comment uh, will definitely has to be about uh, how people who are sitting at the periphery, what is the easiest way for them to start their investment journey? And uh, also to the ones who are already uh, invested, uh, any word of advice uh, for them for the next few years as to how uh, uh, they can uh, maximize on their investments? So, uh, someone who's starting their investing journey, I think uh, they need to understand that uh, if you are young, uh, see, return is something which is not in your control. So, it's not a controllable variable. So, whether market gives you 14% return, 20% return uh, is really not in your control. What is controllable variable is uh, the investing period. Uh, so, you have uh, the investing horizon with you. So, the sooner you start, the better it is. Because what it also does is that it allows you to sort of make mistakes and also do possible course corrections as well. And for doing that also, uh, you need to do a lot of reading in terms of, uh, so uh, I think one of the common things uh, what one can read is uh, the business papers. In addition to that, uh, uh, you have uh, websites like BSC and NSE. A lot of companies disclose a lot of information in terms of annual report, uh, also in terms of presentation. Those are very informative uh, for any uh, anyone to sort of read. And uh, it is important that you develop a thought process of your own and not really necessarily rely on a tip because uh, not every point in time that tip is going to work or uh, the person who has given you that tip is going to be available to sort of uh, or to advise you further. So which is why it is extremely important that uh, develop a thought process of your own. And mind you, it is a lot more rewarding when you do that. Thank you, Pankaj, so much for joining us today and for giving us all these insights. Thank you so much. Well, we hope this session has demystified the basics of investing and inspired you to take charge of your financial future. Remember, every investment, big or small, is a step towards your goal. So stay informed, stay patient and keep growing your wealth. Thank you. ICICI Direct and Money Control present Path to Financial Freedom 